Ayes are 71, noes are 48. The motion is agreed to members. We move to part 1A. Uh, debate on clauses 15 and 17 to 20. Chair. Grant Robertson. Thank you uh, very much, Mr Chair, for the opportunity to take a call around Part 1A. I want to focus this contribution on two elements of the Minister's SOP number 100. Uh, these are the new clause, or the amendments to Clause 17, and the new Clause 17A. And these are two clauses that are representative of the concerns that were raised by uh, members of the opposition during the debate on Part 1 around matters being included in the SOP uh, that we believe need more attention, uh, certainly need more explanation and could have benefited from uh, a referral back to uh, the Select Committee. In particular, in that regard, I want to note uh, the amendment to Clause 17, which doesn't even rate a mention in the Minister's explanatory note to her SOP. Uh, clause 17 doesn't get uh, uh, mentioned there. I'm just checking right till the end of the explanatory note, and no. No mention whatsoever of the justification for a new Clause 17, or the amendment to Clause 17. Manages to get 17A in there briefly, but absolutely nothing in the explanatory note to tell the Parliament why there should be the replacement to Clause 17.3 that has been suggested in the SOP. That's why, Mr Chair, the opposition parties want this bill referred back to the Select Committee. Because in a new uh, Clause 17.3, or the amended Clause 17.3, we have a change that appears to create a very large loophole. No explanation from the Minister in her explanatory note. Just dump it on the table and say, accept this. Well, if we have a look at the new uh, Clause 17.3 that's here, we see in it, among other things, that if a person undertaking the activity applies for a marine consent within the period described in subsection 2, the activity may continue after the period has expired until the application, and we go to 3b, is returned as incomplete under section 42 and any objections and appeals are determined. So what that clause could be doing is saying that if someone has an application and that it's returned by the Environmental Protection Authority as being incomplete, that process can carry on. Now that process can actually carry on ad infinitum because when you look at the uh, reference to section 42, that actually says that every time it's returned, if it's incomplete and then it's returned, it's considered to be a new application. So we could be launching into a continuous process here for an application that's returned as incomplete. But we've got no explanation from the Minister as to why we should be agreeing today to allow for a situation that would see an incomplete application simply carry on. No explanation whatsoever from the Minister for that. Now, there may well be a good explanation. There may, this may well not be the giant loophole that it looks like, but from this side of the House, it's very hard to tell. An incomplete application is an incomplete application. It hasn't met the rules. It shouldn't be being processed, except under this, it gets an exception, and then it gets to come back again as a new application. So the Minister may want to take a call and explain to the House, having completely failed to put any explanation in the explanatory note on this matter, to let the House know why that clause has arrived. A legal, a legal opinion, that would be right. We had a bit of a struggle with that along, along the way. But um, I, I hope the Minister does take a call because this is the problem with dropping a large SOP like this on the table without the opportunity for proper select committee analysis of it. And then we come to the new Clause 17A, which at least does get a mention in the explanatory note. This is the clause, Mr Chair, that allows for planned petroleum activities to commence and continue. Now, let's be absolutely clear about what this new clause is doing. It's talking about planned activities, not just existing activities, but planned activities. And so what this does, it says they both may commence and continue. At what stage are some of the activities around New Zealand up to at the moment, whether they are existing or planned? This clause is effectively saying if it's planned, it can carry on. It's the green light 
for some projects that have been causing, or potentially for some projects that have been causing concern around New Zealand, Mr Chair. So we've got two clauses here in Part 1A that I believe have come to this House without adequate explanation that appear to me to look like clauses that are loopholes, and we have to, I believe, Mr Chair, have a more adequate explanation. Eugenie Sage.